Yo, yo, WB, this is JB with some freestyles for you and me, and we're going to go on to work at energy. So uh, I've been very inspired by uh, the efforts that folks have put in. So I've uh, created a little rap here to, uh, to thank and honor you and touch on some of the topics. All right. Here we go. Get into the flow. You know, I'm amazed and inspired by how hard y'all are working. Doing physics so strenuously, your brains must be hurting. It's been shown by experiment, the brain's like a muscle. The harder you think, the more your brain gains hustle. But today we're discussing work of a different kind. It can't be performed by efforts of the mind. Since this kind of work causes an increase in speed, mechanical work requires an energy feed. A gain in mechanical energy needs work to be done, and that's maximized when the cosine of the angle is 1, where theta is the angle between force and displacement. You only gain speed when you're forced the way velocity is facing. No matter how much the force or power of will, no work will be done when the cosine theta is nil. The secret to this is what I next will tell. The only force component that matters is one that's parallel to vector displacement. But time's a wasting, so let's get started, because this topic's amazing. Yo, here we go. Let's do some lecture on work and energy. All right, so today's lecture uh, will be discussing work, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So why is it that some forces will cause things to speed up while others will not? Let's try to shed some light on that with this familiar situation right here. We have a ball going around in a circle. It's held by a string that's exerting a force F, which is in this direction. Here's force F, and that's force F going that way. And uh, so this is going around in a circle, but it will never speed up if that's the only force. It will just keep going around in that circle forever. Now, why is it that this situation, if I go to this situation, let's say we have a rocket, which is also on a string, and um, let's say initially it could also still be the same centripetal force. That's not what I'm interested in. But let's say that that force F is instead applied this way, this rocket. Now, what's causing the rocket to go is that it's throwing fuel out this way, and that the fuel throws the rocket this way. But why is it that this force, when applied like this, you still have to apply a centripetal force to keep it going in a circle, but when applied like this, the same magnitude force as we had before, force F, is going to cause this thing to keep speeding up. Speeding up and speeding up continuously. What is the difference? If you notice that the direction is different, you're absolutely right. And that really is the difference in the situation. In our rocket ship situation, there is a force that is parallel to the instantaneous displacement. You could also say parallel to the velocity. That would be the same thing. In this situation, the force is ex always exactly perpendicular to the instantaneous displacement or perpendicular to the velocity. So as we'll see, no work is done in this situation where work is done in this situation. Let's go ahead and get into it right here. We're today talking about work, kinetic energy, and potential energy. And so for starters, um, I've got to introduce you to a little bit of math here, and that's called the dot product of vectors, also called the scalar product. And when we uh, symbolize this, we use a dot. You may say, oh, he's just multiplying there. This dot is more than just multiplication. Uh, it means something very specific. Uh, a dot product of two vectors means you multiply the magnitude, that those uh, absolute value signs right there mean magnitude, the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B, and then you multiply it by the cosine of the angle between them. Now this is a uh, something that's used a lot in all kinds of different physics, uh, and well, here's what it means. What this dot product is, is we are multiplying the two components of these vectors which are parallel to each other. In other words, let's say I have a, a vector here of 7 newtons. I've got a vector here of 10 meters. If I want to, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. If I want A dot B, that'll be 7 newtons times 10 meters, but importantly times the cosine of the angle between them. 
cosine of 60 happens to be 1 half. So uh, what we get is this times this is 70 joules. But we multiply by half, we get 35 joules is the dot product of these two vectors. Now you'll notice if you figured out the component of this that is parallel with the displacement, the component of force that's parallel to displacement is just 3.5 newtons. So that turns out, especially when we're talking about work, that turns out to be the only component that matters. The part of the force that is parallel to the displacement. You could also look at it as the only displacement that matters is the part of displacement that's parallel to the force. You will get the same magnitude because A dot B is the same as B dot A. Not true for cross products as we'll find out later. So let's take a, a look at a really, really cool and easy way to deal with these dot products and that is using unit vector notation for dot products. It's very convenient, very easy. Uh, when you do this, for, let's remember what i hat is. i hat is a vector of uh, magnitude 1 that's in the horizontal direction. Uh, so you'll notice that if we have a vector of magnitude 1 in the horizontal direction and we dot it on a vector of also magnitude 1 in the horizontal direction, i dot i is really just 1 times 1 times cosine of the angle between them, which is 0. That value just gives us 1. No big surprise. In a similar way, j dot j is also 1. k dot k is also 1. However, i, a vector of magnitude 1 in the horizontal direction, dotted on j, a vector of magnitude 1 in the vertical direction, gives us 1 times 1 times the cosine of 90 degrees, which gives us 0. So when you dot perpendicular vectors on each other, the magnitude, and notice that it only is a magnitude, this has no direction, it's just a scalar, and that's why this is called the scalar product also, the, the magnitude is just zero when you dot two perpendicular vectors on each other. The dot product follows the commutative property, a dot b is equal to b dot a. It also follows the distributive property, a dotted on the quantity b plus c, and this is a vector sum, will equal a dotted on b plus the vector a dotted on the vector c. Again, these are, when you're all done with your dot product, you will have only a magnitude. The dot gets rid of that vector quality. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this example right here. So let's say we have this vector, 3n i hat plus 4n j hat, so was, this is a force, 3 newtons in the horizontal direction and 4 newtons in the vertical direction, and we want to dot that on this vector here, which is 5 meters in the horizontal direction uh, plus 2 meters in the vertical direction. So you can just use the FOIL method, first, outside, inside, last. So here's the first two terms times each dotted on each other, plus outside, 3 newtons i hat dotted on 2 meters uh, j hat. That's nothing. Why? Because they're perpendicular with each other. The cosine between them is 90. Cosine of 90 is 0. Similarly, this component zeroes out. This one doesn't. The only ones that actually matter, therefore, are this term right here and this term right here. And when we add those up, we get 15 joules, because Newton times meter is a joule, and plus 8 joules is just 23 joules is the final answer there. Notice that it's a scalar. There is no direction. As we'll find out, work and energy have no direction. It's just an amount. Now, it can be negative. You can have a negative scalar, for example, uh, a bank account, that has no direction, it's not going north, east, south, or west, but a bank account can be positive, you got money in the bank, all right, or it can be negative, uh-oh, you overdrew your account, yet that bank account is not going north, south, east, or west, or in any direction, can still be positive or negative. So we'll find that the scalars, the scalar product gives us the result of a scalar that has no direction, in this case, we multiply newtons times meters and get joules, the unit of work or energy.